Hey, what's going down? In this FL Studio 20 trap beat video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make a trap banger. I'm gonna show you the three step process I use to make banger after banger. Use this, it works. So make sure you watch to the very end. I'm just gonna let it fly. I'm gonna do it from scratch. I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna see what it do. This ain't, this ain't arranged, this ain't scripted. Mm. So I'm really an introvert. I don't even really act like this, but it's better to make entertaining videos. So this is what we do. Ooh, shout out to Mitchell and Ness for sponsoring your boy. The first thing I do is work on the melody. Some people work on the drums first. Some people work on the melody first. I work on the melody. Today we're gonna use Absinthe. Absinthe from Native, Absinthe from Native Instruments. Your boy used to consult with them. I'm always good, sponsored by them. I appreciate them too. Honestly, sometimes I just do the first thing that I hear and that's the best way that I do it. Everybody's different. Sometimes I use the piano roll, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll with that. Uh, another quick tip on how to, let's say you play something on the piano, right? And then it was good and you're like, dang, I can never play it again. Well, FL Studio 20, you got this thing over here. You go to tools and then you go to macros and then you go to, oh, uh, psych. You go to dump psych. Let's see, you go to site. It's easy, all you gotta do is dump score log to selected pattern and you can go last two minutes, last five minutes, last 10 minutes. So I'm actually gonna do last two minutes. So look, this is the last two minutes. I'm gonna clear out that kick. And this is the first thing that I just played right now. Now that was purely accidental, you saw it. I'm just gonna use it though, just for just for uh, tutorial sake. A lot of times it's the accidents that make things hot. So with FL Studio 20, what you can do is you can spread this out like this. So let's say it's off like that, right? I like to teach in a way sometimes that gives you options that like is in a real life scenario. So let's say it's off a little bit, right? One thing you can do is you can hold the alt button and hit Q and that'll quantize it. But as you see, it's still off. So what you can do then is you can hold that same alt button, select it and drag it over. Usually if you're lining up with the darker black lines, that's a good sign that you're on beat, you know, especially for the beginners out there. Okay, so this one is my, mm, mm, mm. this is like a little bit shorter in, so. So it looks like I'm gonna have to drag this whole thing over a couple notches because maybe my quantize didn't work so well. So before, like when I used to make beats, that was like it. I would just use that and I would start building drums. But now I hear like when you have a chord change, build off that, build the melody off that and I'll show you how. So you copy it right here and then you insert another sound. Let's just stick with Absinthe because we've been using that. And then let's just, uh, I have some, some sounds loaded. I mean, some presets I like to use. Uh, let's, let's try this one and then you just, control and you paste it and then you hear that other one that other one I'm gonna solo real quick and so you what you want to do is you want to create variants right you want to like change it around so I don't know just I just indiscriminately let's let's just grab the top because I just see it's the top and then move it down an octave that is by uh, holding the alt and then going down Okay, so let's just take the top. And then take the top again. It's kind of muddy, I'll leave it back up. And then I'll take the bottom and then put the bottom on the top or something, you know, just random. And maybe take a couple notes from here and move those down. And take a couple notes from right here and move those down. And what you'll notice is that, let's see, I'll make, I'll take a couple up here. 
some people might be like, damn, Crash, your my method is random, and that's that's kind of what it is. To me, that's where you find the magic, and that's just that's just the way I do it. So what happens is if you combine this layer with the original layer that you did, you're gonna have something that's totally brand new. It's like uh, mixing up, I don't know. So another cool thing you can do is also, is you can create a melody. So, so it's like you hear it a little bit in your ear and then you go, hmm, what can ride on the top? So then you might go, Another thing you can do is get this this plugin is is raw. Uh, <laughs> this plugin is called Halftime, and it's dope. Like it does things that like Gross Beat does, but it it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna assign it to its own mixer, and I'm going to put it on channel five. And then I'm gonna go to my plugin, and then I'm gonna go to Halftime. The plugin is called Halftime. Listen to what it does. I'm gonna turn it off first so you don't see it, and I'm gonna mute it. I'm gonna solo it. Turn it on. You hear it? Ooh. Now watch the way it sounds with this one, other one in it also. It's those imperfections that make your beat stand out. You know, don't try to be too perfect. So let me just wrap it up with one more sound. It's kind of like in the higher registers I hear, or just I just don't hear like maybe like a strong pad or or I don't know. Um, one way to do this also is to study the great, study the dope producers out there, study the people that you like, and see what type of sounds that they mix up, that they match up. So let's just do this one a different way. Let's let's go in the piano row. So you see I made it real like real basic. See what it sounds like one octave. sound like a beat in and of itself kind of like just like have some bounce and if you need to add some more bounce a quick hack to do that would be with a gross beat so you can go gross beat and then you can um you can give it that it's like a uh it's like a two beat gate and then take it off a little bit so it's a little bit more subtle. Or you can do one beat gate. I'll let you hear what it sounds like. So it gives it a little bit more of, um, what's that word? A little bit more bounce. Okay, so sometimes I get anxious. Sometimes I just can't wait to work on the drums. So I'm just gonna start on the drums. Sometimes I would like put in one more sound, but my buddy, shout out to Kev the producer, uh, Kev Barnes, dope, dope dude. He told me, he used to work with Rodney, um, and he said that, Rodney Jerkins, and he said that Rodney would tell him two or three beats, uh, two or three sounds, and then put it over hard drums. So um, I hope he ain't, he's not mad that I, that I gave that Jew. I'm pretty sure he has before, but, you know, just keep it simple. Shout out to Kev Barnes. Okay, that's another thing I do. I'll listen to a sound and I'll be like, hmm, how can I use this? So, so mm, mm, mm. you want to 
want to give like your little sounds like rhythm. like a little thing I learned from Metro uh, this little Uzi track he put that snare right there it's like a little hit and I'm like oh that sounds so hard so I just use it so then this is like a little textured uh, hat It's like gumbo. I try to make beats like gumbo. stuff like gumbo So when you turn your um and when you turn your drums your say you do all your melodies off your drums should also kind of bounce on their own. Now notice I ain't put in a kick yet. So that'll make a big deal. So with the slower beat, you want to kind of have your kicks a little bit more active. Usually, there's no one way to do anything. It's all, there's a bunch of ways to skin a cat. Usually, if your beat's slower, uh, you want to, uh, like, put in more kicks. Shout out to Jay Nari. He, he put me up on that. So it's more bouncy, you know what I'm saying? It's more active. Now let's put a let's put a hi hat in here. You notice I'm not even listening to the to the melody. Sometimes you just want to switch it up and just make the beat talk on its own. So you put them down. You put fill every two steps. You go to piano roll. You hold alt and then hit L, and then you can do your little individual chops too. So on the first note, you might want to hold um, alt or the window button and hit the U. So I've noticed also with hi-hats, if something sounds good, you might want to look for a place so you can repeat that. And then an octave lower or some steps lower. Let's just go with that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to make it quick, but um some 
let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, so my bad. I've had these melodies up way loud. And sometimes with your melody, sometimes the thing that's all up in your face, like if you kind of like hear it, you might want to turn it down. Hmm. You hear what it sounds like without that thing? Okay, so this one's gonna come down to mixing because the sounds are kind of loud. So the way that we would put a mix on it is to uh, separate all the tracks. By doing that, you can outline all these, for instance, and you can hold the menu button or the Apple button. Um, so I'm using a Mac, right? But the, the keyboard is is for a PC because it's got a Windows logo, but it's wireless. So I'm, I think I'm hitting the Apple button or the, the control button. No, it's not control. Well, whatever, you'll find it. And then hit L, right? And so if you do that, it'll put each sound on the mixer individually. And then you'll be able to come here and then you start you start with the, the kick first, usually. And usually I might add an 808, but right now, just for time's sake, I'm just gonna, um, it's simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna use this kick. And then what you also wanna do is make sure your kicks aren't, like, you see how I turned the volume all the way up? Turn it down a little bit so it's not going into the mixer super overdriven. Um, even though that's the wave, like the overdriven sound, but then it'll at least give you more control to do that or not. Uh, a very easy uh, plug-in to get that overdriven sound would be <clears throat> the Fruity Fast Distortion, like right there. You hear it. Yeah, it's dope what the, uh, the producers are doing these days with the, the distorted kicks. Definitely, definitely, definitely hot. So you might bring your hi-hats, bring those down. Let me see where the kick is. And then bring in just your individual sounds. Usually you wanna probably put in the clap. So claps you might wanna bring down to like negative 11 dB. And then this is that. If you see any patterns, usually bringing them down. So they are all at kind of like at a decent level with the kick and the um, snares going the hardest. Your sounds, your additional sounds, sometimes you want to have them around like negative 20, 21, somewhere around there. And mix all your sounds together in the same zone so that none of them out, outweigh another one. Usually, if you've got an agenda where you want one sound to sound super louder than the other, by all means. So you notice nothing's clipping. Everything's at a cool level. It's at around like negative 6 dB. That's cool because it gives us space to uh, to boost it. A simple way to do it, maybe throwing a multi bearing compressor and maybe with a preset of like Master and dB 2.4. Turn it up. Okay, so when I hear it, I don't really hear the kick bumping that hard. So. Hmm, so this is what I might do. I might just throw in a 808 and just guarantee it. Okay, and then so this is the original kick. I would just copy this and put this, copy and paste it.
Okay, so this has the loop points on, turn those off, and then right click and click cut itself so it doesn't. Add some bump, right? I still hear these a little bit too loud, I think. Yeah, it might be too loud. That might be a little bit better. And that new kick I just brought in, I don't want it to overpower things. Okay, so we got a cool little medley, cool little groove. Um, the way to break it up next is arrange it. So you would split the track, split by channel, and then go to the playlist, and then go to number one, and then you hit the plus button on the side, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, hit the plus button, go to the next track, just keep doing that all the way down, and then, uh, are those? I don't think those are anything. Okay. So keep doing that all the way down. And then, um, your melody notes, because the way I do it is the, I start with the melody notes. Those will be on the top. My bad. My energy is kind of low on this. I just wanted to get this out. It's been a second since I made one. So, um, sometimes you just got to do it. Sometimes you just got to get the job done. Keep doing it. So these are the three. And then what you do is you, copy and then you paste them right so the format of a beat the first if you notice the dark gray is the uh the instruments cut all that out and this is what you'll hear that sounds kind of like a better groove than having these that low end so I'll just start with that okay so I think that's from uh, Nexus I mean uh, from um, gross beat You know, if you got your tag, that's my daughter. If you got a tag, put that in. Class has bangles. Okay, so this is what happens with the new version of uh, Gross Beat for some, at least on mine. It, if I have something in Gross Beat, it gives it this weird, just in playback, it'll give it, it'll throw it off, so. What am I going to do? I'm just going to turn it off for now. And then I'll turn it right back on um, during the uh, before export, if I remember. Okay. Sometimes I just randomly pick stuff to take out and just see how it works. Of course I have an idea, but not always. This will be the, the verse. Let me test something though. Yeah, so it's gonna be. So this will be the verse. And then I'll do stuff like just select that and then bring that in to put in a drop and see how it sounds. Take this. Randomly take some sounds out. Try to change it up.
Okay, and then I'm, t I'm making it just for video sake really short. So you could actually just go back and tag tag the, uh, the intro on here. I would usually do a few other things, but just for uh, to keep it simple, I'm just going to keep it just like this. And that's a basic, very, very basic beat. From here, you can listen to it, go in it. If you have like little changes you can make, you can change the pattern, you can uh, modify it, you can put in drops, you can put in uh, uh, tape stops, you can put in like the filter effects, you can drop more things. This is just very basic uh, that I just for wanted to show you for demonstration purposes. Okay, so this is this is actually a good lesson right here. Um, I got the first thing and it's just going monotonous. It's just like doing the same thing. Where is it at? This one, the lead. So what I usually do is I'll hear this, and then so music goes in these uh, forms, these patterns. So right now it's a a a a a a a. It's just a section all the way across. What I'm gonna do? It music goes in forms of a b a c. There's a a. A B, there's A A B A, there's I already did A B A C right A B A C which is the most common so I'm gonna do the A A B A C format so you can hear the difference between when it's just like the same thing over and over again or if it's changed so I'm gonna do it. The way you do it is you click this button you go make unique and then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna change it just a little bit. Oh, I forgot this was the halftime one, so it's going to require a little bit more um, variation for you to hear it. trying to get trying to vary it that's very very subtle I don't even know if you'll be able to tell it's super subtle um, but that's this one so it's if we go a B a C this next one would be uh, so it's this is the B section a B a C so it'd be right here also um, and I'll A B yeah we can just do it the first one A B A C sorry I'm just giving you the raw uh, process it's not always the prettiest but so the C section let me try to really make it different so we can hear the difference in the beat um, I'll take the whole entire line right here and maybe See what this sounds like. I 
That's a little bit different. I guess just experiment with it. Okay, so I don't think that's gonna necessarily sound that good, but just for example's sake, we'll... Section B, right here. Okay, so that actually is not going to sound that bad when it resolves back to the original. So check it out. I know this comes, this might be confusing, but watch this a couple times. Oh, shoot. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it. So I'm copying this over. So the ABAC, ABAC. So instead of being it, the, the reason for all this was for me to show you instead of having it be just the same all the way through which can be monotonous we're going to change it up so let's bring everything back in Okay, so it's it's this since since this is the start of the uh, the hook. Normally, in most cases, it would be um, A B A C. So in most cases, the A section would start right here where I have it on the nine. So that, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this four one two three four, and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna put it back. But on the nine, I'm going to start it over. That's, oh shit. Oh, there it goes. Um, yeah, so that makes more sense. So yeah, that would be more of an even. I don't even know if I'm gonna get into the reasons why for the beginners if there's too much confusion, but basically I'm just aligning the format of how I made it A, B, A, C to the entire beat. So like for instance, the the B section doesn't start at the beginning, or like the second half of it doesn't start at the beginning of the verse. If it's all A, 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 then it doesn't matter. It's playing the same thing over and over again. But if it changes up, then we need to make sure that uh, it's, it's uh, in alignment with the structure, the arrangement, intro, hook, Intro, bridge, uh, verse, bridge, hook. There's different. There's different ones you can where you can use. And my bad, really, my bad for uh for being just so vague. Uh, that's just kind of how I am sometimes. But just figured I'd help. Uh, at least try. So 
So another thing is don't let be don't be afraid to make last minute changes on your beats. I just sped it up ten, or which is really five, because I got it in double time, uh, BPS, just to give it some more energy. Sometimes it requires that. I'm gonna bring it down a couple. that fourth section switches it up. I hear like a clap right there. See, like I heard a clap. So I'm about to export it and uh, usually I would do other things like I might add like that that low filter like it goes from low to high here I'll add that real quick you just uh, select that area go to your mixer and then you add um, you go to the master track and you add a par parametric EQ to go over to presets you right click you go to create automation clip and then um, Go back to your playlist and that'll create a playlist right there. You just pull down right here and now you got that. unique splice it a little bit so give it that little rise feel And there's other things you can do, like in the verse, for instance, you can uh, make your drums, your kicks talk a little bit more. You can make them more active. You can uh, make them unique in the pattern and then uh, place more instances, like make them more active, like in the verse section, because, you know, that's kind of like usually a deader section. But the artist is doing their thing. Make sure you leave enough room for the artist. But there's different ways you can just make your beats more dynamic, more dynamic. If there's anything you hear in your beat that sounds monotonous to you, it's definitely going to sound monotonous to somebody else. So find a way to modify it a little bit. Move a note up, move a note down, move it a whole octave up, move it a whole octave down, throw in a couple more notes, take a couple notes out. Whatever you got to do, just uh, keep listening for what's monotonous and boring and flip it and change it and just keep changing it. And don't be afraid to, to break down the whole beat, go in a whole new direction. So I'm going to turn it over to you in the comments. Let me know about any tips and tricks that you do for your beats that I might have left out. There's a lot of stuff that I would do and add, and but I just want to make sure I keep it simple for all the beginners out there. It's all good. Keep making beats. It's okay to be whack at first. Uh, just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it and keep doing it. And never, you're never, never, never too much of a, of a beginner to stop. Uh, to start, sorry, uh, marketing yourself and marketing your brand. Some of the most simple beats that come out 
come from the streets. The, most, the biggest hits that come from the streets, they, they're the simplest beats because it's just the producer and the artist and they're just putting their best foot forward, making it happen. And, and the craziest and newest sounds come out from the most humble beginning. So go ahead. I'm going to leave it in the comments for you to share with us your tips and tricks. Go ahead, join that membership. Click below. It's, it's really informative. Mark it yourself. Hit that like button. Smash it. Subscribe. My bad for my energy being a low. Hey, it's real. Sometimes we are up and all that. Sometimes we're just normal. So it's all good. Keep making those videos too. Promote yourself. All right. Uh, shout out to Noel. That's that's that dude right there. Shout out to Noel at Mitchell and Ness for sponsoring your boy with the clean Reggie Jackson uh, authentic jersey. Mitchell and Ness.